and as we approach the holiday season, a new motion picture premieres December 2nd, teaching us again to believe. It's set in the small town of Grundy, Virginia, where the fictional but prominent Peyton family always provides the highlight of the year, the annual Christmas pageant. When Matthew Payton takes over the family business, he has met with tremendous financial challenges, forcing him to cancel that pageant. Matthew goes through some tough stuff and then is befriended by Clarence, a boy who believes in miracles. It is through this newfound friendship that Matthew is taught to believe and to give faith a chance. Take a look. All I do know is it's going to take a miracle to put that thing on this year. Last time I checked, I can't afford one. So what you're saying, Mr. Payton, is that your company can no longer afford to put on the Christmas <laughs> holiday pageant? That's correct. Oh, it's been your responsibility since 1990 when your grandfather died, isn't that right? He started this tradition for the financial well-being of this community. No, he started it as a gift to this community to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Christmas it was never intended to generate profit for this town or for any other, and certainly not for itself. From Newsmax, New York, now we welcome in actor Ryan Quinn, who plays the lead, Matthew Payton. Ryan, we appreciate your time tonight here on Newsmax Prime. Tell us about the journey your character takes, and was this something you could really embrace, considering the fact that the, the movie is filmed in your hometown of Grundy, Virginia? That's right, yes. And the character definitely goes on a, a journey for sure. And uh, when I was offered the role of Matthew Payton, I suggested that the writer and director take a look at the real town that I grew up in. Probably, J.D., not unlike anybody else that would read a script, you know, in my mind's eye, I saw the places that I grew up. So when I read the script about the, the railroad tracks, I pictured the railroad tracks in my hometown when I was growing up. I pictured the the uh, drive-in uh, restaurant, I pictured the, the county courthouse, and so I suggested that the uh, producers go back with me to my hometown, since it, it was set in a, a small town, east coast, uh, it had to be salt of the earth, blue collar, hard working people, and the town itself is a character in the film, so I said, well, why not follow me back to where I came from, and let's take a look at actually shooting in what is the most economically depressed county in the state of Virginia, and let's bring a Hollywood motion picture back there and see what happens. And sure enough, they, they figuratively rolled out the red carpet for us, and thousands of extras showed up. And it, it sounds cliche to say they, you know, we couldn't have filmed the movie without them, but that's absolutely the truth in this case. Well, I just and think about that. You know, your, your fictional character said, well, your grandfather brought this in as an economic bonanza, but really, by suggesting your hometown, that, that generated some good things for the economy of Grundy. But what I thought was significant in the exchange we saw from the trailer, you stand up and say, no, no, wait a minute. This pageant wasn't set up for an economic bonanza, but to celebrate Christmas, to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Getting back to basics, getting away right. from commercialism of Christmas, is there, a, is there a point in the movie that brings that home with a, with a special poignance in your mind? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, at its core, the movie is about hope. It's about, uh, it's about belief, and, and we think it's, it's timely, of course, you know, being on, on this side of the election and, and having no idea some of the themes that were going to come out in this movie when we were shooting a year ago would be so relevant to, to what's happening today. But... There's certainly plenty of points in the film where uh, my character, who is a, who's a hardworking businessman, you know, probably a, uh, a country club living, silver spoon in his mouth kind of guy at the top of the film, goes on this journey and, and by way of an unexpected hero in this little African-American boy that finds him, my character gets beaten up, um, you know, and is found on the other side of the tracks, probably a place that he would never be caught dead, but uh, was almost caught dead on the other side of the tracks. And through this story of faith and belief and hope, through the little boy, aptly, by the way, played by the, the brilliant Isaac Ryan Brown and his mother, Danielle Nicolay, they nurse my character back to health. And he's forced to ask those big questions that we all need to be asking, I think, this time of year. Uh, what is truth with a capital T? What about morality and mortality and the haves versus the have-nots? And what does that mean? And, and what's my role in all this? There's a, there's a great line at the top of the movie where Shawnee Smith's character asks my character, 
what he's going to do to help others that are less fortunate. And he says, well, isn't that the, go the government's job? You know, that's mm -hmm. kind of a throwaway line in the film. But it, it really underscores the fact that it's not. It's not the government job. There's always somebody that's less fortunate than we are. And we have capacity to help everyone out. And now's a good time of the year to start thinking about that. Remembering from the words of Scripture, doing it to the least of these. Ryan O'Quinn. Absolutely. The new movie is Believe. It premieres December 2nd. Ryan, tonight from Newsmax, New York. Thanks for your time, and I'm going to put that on our family motion picture list. Great to have you, sir. Excellent. It, it's one for the whole family. Thanks Amen. so much. Amen. Good to have you. Ryan O'Quinn playing Matthew Payton in Believe. Now, before you and I part company, the holiday season is also the season of giving. As Ryan just mentioned, today was Giving Tuesday, and so... Newsmax uh, has our list of the top 50 charities that celebrate American values. We'll give you the top five. Number one, the Salvation Army. You're probably seeing bell ringers as you do your shopping. Number two, Habitat for Humanity. Number three is the Navy SEAL Foundation. Number four, the YMCA of the USA. And number five, Kiva. To find the full list, the top 50 charities celebrating American values, go to our parent website. You see it right there, Newsmax.com. Tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern on America Talks Live, Hour 2. A unique combination, a dynamic duo, if you will. We call them Lethal Weapon, The Golden Years. Former police detective Tom Watley and communications and political consultant Clarence McKee will join us. And again, we'll take your calls. That's 1 o'clock Eastern. Then tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern on Newsmax Prime, former U.S. Senator and Democratic leader George Mitchell of Maine, Amy Kramer, and our radio panel featuring our old pal Joe Paggs, who you see each night here at 6 in his simulcast on Newsmax TV. I will be looking for you at 1 o'clock Eastern, then again here at 8 p.m. Eastern. Till then, stay brave, stay free, stay tuned, and thanks for watching.